it's a true curation process where we need everybody's input because it's going to be diverse to say the least. Where we normally pick pop as a genre, or we'll talk about EDM for one night. There's going to be a lot to keep you on your toes with tonight. So who else better than to wrangle this madness than the one and only Jason Janai? Uh, if you're watching the YouTube replay, please click subscribe. We're slowly getting our channel started, but set starters, you chose this topic. You know what? I feel like every time I go on to the platform, Crate Hackers, every time I'm, I'm thinking about curating some content for the world that we all share, I, I try to come up with things that are not just easily replicated. I try to do things that I've found to be not just successful, but proven to have helped me in some way, shape, or form. And I feel that although this is a little bit outside of the traditional format where we'll go through and we'll say, okay, start with this song. Then it goes, this is the next song that I played. And this is exactly how I crushed this thing or whatever. I feel that having a set starter crate in your music collection, in your music library is probably one of the most important crates that someone could have. And I feel that if you don't currently have one built as like a go-to, an emergency thing, you like, you never know when this crate could come in to be valuable. And I feel like it's a, it's a crate that I've, for my personal uh, set starter crate, like I lean on that almost every time I work in some way, shape or form. Cause I'm always sure. trying to think of something different. Yo, where, where can I go? What, what didn't I do? Maybe you see something or you see a track and you're like, oh shit, here's an idea for this. Having that together for your style of play and the events that you do, which are going to impact everything that everyone contributes today is like, it's gold. It's, it's a crate that everyone should have in their collection. I think it's one of the most important things that you can build for yourself. But I have to say in all candid transparency is that the types of events that you play at, the region that you're located in, maybe your age and or your experience are going to dictate what might fall into that crate. And, yeah. and I think most importantly, it's the types of events that you do, right? If you're doing weddings, it's one thing. If you're doing Sweet Sixteens, yeah, there might be some crossover that applies to both, but some of the stuff that might crush at a wedding with more middle-aged people is not going to maybe hit as hard in some circles for teen events or yeah. vice versa, right? That's so true because you're pinpointing exactly what the intro of today's hackathon was about. I prefaced it by saying this is going to be a sporadic crate to say the least, but if anything, thought starters, this isn't going to be a point A to point B performance. This is just like a toolbox, if you will. And to me, I got, I, I primed the pump a little bit and I want you to see behind the curtain. You might've done a little work yourself there as well, but let's just get all of the hackers to help out. And here's how. So Hackathons work like this. We need assistance from the DJ community. We have a lot of people in the chat. What up, Jay Dowd? How are you? Hey, Austin. Joe Bunn is still kicking it with us. Michael Kennedy, I'm seeing you all there. Listen, can you open up your second screen, perhaps, maybe on another laptop or an iPad? Go to this link, createoftheweek.com, and we can all work together on one canvas, createoftheweek.com. Now, in order to get behind the padlock, which you'll see in a second here, you got to unlock the padlock with two song choices. And I think that's one thing I want to put a pin on. Let's talk about two song choices and just put this thing in perspective. Janai, let's paint a picture of uh, a scenario you'd like to start a party with. In your head, a party that you'd like to get started. Look, I work in primarily the wedding space and the corporate space. So I feel like okay at a wedding event or at a corporate event, there are sometimes very hard stops and very cold starts, right? So like the scenario would be a very mixed crowd. And in the Northeast, a mixed crowd could lean on any different ethnic background, race, religious belief, right? Like people that are crazy, people that are more conservative, people that are very wealthy, people that are just getting by. It could be anything from anywhere. It could be country, it could be city, it could be urban, it could be suburban America, it could be the, the <laughs> nice of nice or the the not so nice of not so nice, where you're like, how am I getting out of here tonight? So right. oh, there's I, a lot of those too. So I we're think, at the padlock right now. And this would be where I'd want you to maybe just start priming the pump with me. And everyone else does the same at createoftheweek.com. Again, createoftheweek.com is your second screen. Createoftheweek.com takes you to the padlock and you're going to suggest some songs. And just 
fire off. Give me two songs that just help me in the chat or maybe from Jan. I Jan, give me a song to unlock me or an, anyone. I'm thinking first in the chat, give me something to unlock <laughs> it with in, in the and, comments. And this could be Latin. This could be Motown. This could be hip hop. This could be R and B. This could be pop. This could be EDM. It could be literally anything, but the preface Aaron, I would say this has to be something that will generate energy on a dance floor. It will begin the party if you like immediately track, like, like cold start you know? speakers barely warmed up that those first initial notes to where people like get that look yeah yeah okay i'm gonna say 24k magic i'm gonna say that because it always starts off with that voice the singing and then about 10 seconds in it fires in let's see what else in the chat this is how we do it by tyrone what up tyrone i'm glad you're here man um, this is how we do it let's see good ones coming in already classics mm -hmm. Some stuff that's a little bit newer. And the cool thing about this crate is you don't have to break barriers with it because the latest Dua Lipa track on the radio is not going to be something that generally will get Aunt Brenda and Uncle Fred to dance if they're like yeah. at a wedding, right? Like we want it to be cool enough for like your 28 year old, but you also want it to be familiar enough so your nine year old uncle or aunt is can relate to it and not run for cover once you press it. <laughs> I think we picked some pretty safe choices to unlock the crate. Let's see what's behind the curtain. Now, on your screen, everybody, you're going to see on the left-hand side just some songs that we used to get this thing going. And then on the right-hand side will be the song choices the uh, YouTube viewers as well as the live people in Zoom have chosen. So look at your screen. Okay. On the very right-hand side, you got your leaderboard. And let me see if I can just go ahead and expand on the text so you can see both sides. Okay. So Mike Mandeville, a DJ Jim, yep. the guy who was opening up earlier. <laughs> That's his real name. He got September up on the leaderboard with three likes. And then we got, oh, wow. Good choice. Herbert, the new Dua Lipa, Dance the Night from the Barbie soundtrack. That's a great choice. That to me, <clears throat> Dance the Night feels like, it feels like it's the this summer's version of Can't Stop the Feeling. It's just got that vibe to it. And then over here on the left-hand side, I chose Avicii's Levels. I love the classic Sound of Galvanize from Chemical Brothers, if we're going into maybe some early techno. Trap Queen was one thing I put in was Fetty Wap, but then a few others coming down the pipe here. But were you, oh, dang, you yeah, did some work here, Jam. I, I went in and I was having some fun while we were getting warmed up here. Ah, look at that. Okay, cool. All right, then take me through a tour of what we have on the left-hand side. Walk me through your thoughts. So I, I guess, I don't know, pick a lane. Let's say don't stop to get enough, right? Like okay. it's not, it's really like on that, like that screech, that scratch in that. And then that's just a, that's instant energy onto a dance floor. But that's also like an older track. So you can't, like I wouldn't play that if it's all younger people on the dance floor. But right. next track, something super familiar, super newer, I would say, right? Like I'm good, David Guetta, right? So that's a great party starter. As a matter of fact, like I've used, that track and a universe of different edits of that track this summer wedding season and it's been just epic right a classic mm -hmm. in, in the next one is just a classic anthem that i feel like this song will never die i, I it's this is how we do it usher yeah like these songs are never gonna die they're timeless songs in my opinion and in the framework of an adult, a mainly adult attended event i feel like show me love connects to a lot of different universes right yeah same with the, the track underneath that, right? That's good for that crossover, maybe Latin crowd. It's an anthem for many, right? And it's very recognizable by Aunt Brenda, Uncle Fred, and everyone in, in, in between, right? And Suavemente is great for the white, it's like the white Latin crowd, right? It's not, it's yes, it could be very relevant for like a true Hispanic crowd, but that's more of like- It broke through the mainstream is what it did. That's a very- Yeah, it's, like, it's every, really like an American- or, Universally or, acclaimed, yeah. Very, very like pop. And when I do my descriptives, I'm not, I don't mean to be anything other than just trying to be very like direct. If anyone knows me, I'm yeah, very yeah. like- I just say it how it is and it is oh. what it is, right? And same with like Pitbull, it's a classic, right? Like the Caliocho, that's just right one, two, right? Right on the hook of the chorus, you could drop that in. Same with Give Me Everything. It's just another song that's like- As Admins, would you mind help me out on that? Thank you. Yeah, as a, as a starter. I also started thinking of some other situations where like, I think a great set starter crate, in my opinion, needs to have a lot of diversity and 
like I like to go a lot of different directions. So like, I don't want to just have newer anything. I want to have some older stuff. I do want to have some newer stuff, but I want to have a little bit of an assortment. And remember, I'm from the Northeast. So like Biggie and Hypnotize, like you play that still to this day. And it rips a lot of different people. Same with certain Jay-Z songs, stuff like that. This is how we do it. Montel, Homie, just super classic. <laughs> Shape of You, Scoop got me back on that this track because he played is it. That right? wedding and i'm like what the f- i totally i like just i haven't played the song in forever but it still works it's like one of the only songs in the 95 yam pocket that's yeah mainstream enough and just grandma would not be offended if she heard that song i think yeah. and, and and if we go across the way like i want to dance with somebody another one it's an epic one you can think of and now i'm looking at what has come in from contributors right heaven is a place on earth how will i know epic anthems girls just want to have fun there are a there's so many options and i think in my mind a good set starter create should have a hundred songs in it. I, I know that might be overwhelming to a lot of different people, but to me, it, it's that should be a staple crate in your collection. Whereas if you're ever in a jam, hey, and every DJ, every legitimate working DJ has been in a situation where they've been at a party and been like, I don't know what to do next. I don't know where to go next. I don't know what to play. I don't even know what I should do. Like this crate should be the, let me fight my way out of this paper bag kind of situation right. that you could right. be in, you know? You ever been in a situation where you had that set in mind or that opening, like you had full intention to get the party swayed in this direction, but there was maybe a another DJ who was on before you that just caused you to change your plan altogether? How do you attack a, a chance where something could be a, a scenario changer? Like you were expecting to go this way, but you had to go the other direction. Years ago, I used to play in this pretty, pretty popular spot in Jersey and there was an, I came in and there was an opener on and he was like crushing the, he was like overdriving the room. So I got there probably about 20 minutes before I went on. I went into the DJ booth. I said, what's up? And he's, yeah, I just can't seem to get the room right. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I feel like you're just going a little hard for them right now. It's still early. And he's, yeah, he's, so what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm going to just flip the format. I'm going to play some hip hop. I'm going to just like bounce around and try to get people back in it. And I gave him the keys to my castle. Like he then took that little formula oh. in the last 15 minutes of a set, which actually helped me in a sure. different way. Um, but I think one of the things that I've learned over time is whether you're walking into a venue and stepping up behind someone and being an opening DJ is that's a science that so many people, I feel like still to this day, truly do not understand how important that role is and how good like when you you can go to las vegas i feel like that's probably the, the the best example i can give to anyone if you go out to any one of the bottle service large format large venue night clubs and you can go out and you can listen to someone that you might not have ever heard of before and you could walk in and it could be totally no one there and by the time the headliner comes on, the whole place is on tilt. It's like pandemonium, right? And then it goes up another level when that, that's the science of opening a room. And I feel like that's, that should be another Crate Hackers hackathon. Oh, absolutely. Proper yeah. openings for club cir- circuits. But we'll tell the younger Jay what an opening DJ should be doing really briefly. This well, is a set starting hackathon. Like, talk to the younger version of yourself. I, I could be a better opening DJ because... Yeah, I, I think like for me personally, like I came up in the nightlife world. So like I was very used to playing longer sets that didn't burn through. Like when I first started and I would play like a six hour set, like I knew like the peak, like the top tracks had to be played during this like two hour window. That was like the peak hour, which later on in my life, that's when all like the big name DJs would be flooded into a venue, right? If you go somewhere and someone's going to pop up, they're usually going to come in on that, like that peak hour or that peak moment, right? Like it's 10 after 11 and like we're at capacity and oh shit, here comes whoever on, right? Like that it's, it's by design. And I feel like a good opening DJ has a sense of what's gonna get into the almost like the emotional fabric of the people that are in a room and get them to relax a little bit, get them to open up, get them to dance, get them like, for me, I like if I'm obviously it depends on the club. Right. But, or even a wedding is a good example of that. Like you need to play something that's super familiar. So like people can 
either relate to it or they know the words so they can sing to it. Like the science is you need to have, you need to get them to let loose. And I love like recurrent stuff. I love stuff that's been out and then like almost forgot about, but like different edits of different things that bring some of these like like anthems back into circulation, which are perfect for earlier moments of a, of a night. I like how you brought up a recurrent to find that for some people, because there's a kind of a loose definition for what a recurrent may be. What's your definition of it? So like for me, like a current track would be something that's like in circulation that just was released not too Dance long. Dance the night, do a right? So like a, like a Dua Lipa, like a recurrent track would be a track that had been released previously and has been recirculated, whether it be a different remix, whether it be a different version or like an updated vert, like Pitbull does a ton of that. Right. Or Mm -hmm. uh, even like the David Guetta, I'm good. Technically that's technically in my opinion, it's a recurrent track because it's coming off of. Okay. Okay. So it's going to tap into not just the people that are following David Guetta. They're going to, it's going to tap into the people that may have once followed Eiffel 65, oh, which okay. could possibly be Aunt Cindy and Uncle Steve, who are now 43 years old, who used to be a ton of fun before they had seven kids, right? And it's on that like they connect to. That's Okay, so that's interesting approach because coming from the radio background, Recurrent has a different philosophy. And the re- I'm bringing this up and pausing a minute because this is something that's key with set starting. You don't want to go too hard with all the big bangers right out of the gates. You want to get them familiar. And so we have Currents, which again, any top 40 song on Billboard right now is considered a current pretty much. Gold, I would say a good example of that would be something that's going to stay in your crate forever. Whitney Houston, Crazy in Love, Return of the Mac. All Okay, Recurrent are those songs that are in that pocket of We don't know where we're going to be quite just yet because we haven't fallen into the gold category. Cuff It is a good example. I'm not quite sure if Cuff It's going to be a gold yet. Radio program philosophers are thinking, I'm going to do a current song. I'm going to do a gold song and I'm going to keep playing Cuff It for a while. Just it's it's not quite burnt out yet. And remember the Godier song, somebody I used to know? Yeah. They burned that song to the ground in current mode 116 times a week on FM radio to the point where it didn't even go to recurrent status. They just took it out all together and took it out, brought it back five years later to and become I, a gold. I think so, we're pretty okay. much on because a recurrent for me could be like something that has like fallen out, but then yes. enters back, but maybe doesn't get into that like radio priority. Right. Like- but well, from a DJ's right. point of view, like, like you're, if you're a DJ for a club, I would say your recurrent sweet spot is bringing back those familiar songs that are toasty, cuff it, everyone knows, but flip it on its head with a new remix, have a little bit more fun with it. That's those recurrents so you can get a little bit more experimental because they've heard it before. Yeah. Just give it some spice. It's funny. Like I just saw Kevin shared in the chat. He said Despacito is a recurrent for me. Yes. Working. And I like retired that song completely. Like I, it's, I just stop. I just, to me, it's like someone saying, can you play Despacito? It's like someone coming up to you and being like, can you play Bad Bunny? Like when's Bad? But that's a perfect set starter song that it just starts off with that guitar. No, it's all, it's all good. And lately I've had three different weddings in the past two weeks ask me for Despacito. So having to play it again, I'm like, Oh shit, it, yes, it's not that bad, but that would be like a recurrent for me because it's sure. that, like wouldn't be like a priority track or a, a gold or a di- I call them diamonds, right? Those you got it. Like you got it. You nailed it 100%. That. And I feel that your set starter crate needs to have a variety of diamonds from different worlds that can connect to different universes of people. And I feel like a set starter crate is greater than just starting your set with it. Sometimes a good set starting crate in my opinion, can be as a crate that you dip into to sometimes look for inspiration of where you want to go next based mm-hmm. on the room that you're playing. I'll dip into my set starter crate on my computer without even having to start a set. Sometimes I'm like, what haven't I done? Where can I go? What like you might see a name of a song in your in a folder and you're like, oh, I forgot about that. Let me go this direction. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, we do. We do. Let's shake it up. We're at the bottom of the hour. Love it. Let's have a little fun here. I want to go ahead and play. I was going to play this awesome flashy intro, but now it's not letting me. Oh, wait. Yay. It works now. Oh, is everybody? Ones and O's. Put a one in the chat. One in the chat. One, one, one in the chat. One. Come on. Y'all sleepy on a Tuesday. Where are my hackers? I'm glad you're here, everybody. Every Tuesday night, we drop it live on Zoom at crayon.com. This is your community. 
These are your peeps. We do this both in the chat live and on replay on YouTube. And uh, every so often we stop down, we play a little game called ones and O's. Ones and O's, it works like this. Keep the activity moving in the chat. But if you find a song in the crate that you would never play, what would you click? Zero. Ones or zeros? Ones, zeros. Yeah, one, I would play it. Zero, I would not. And again, for those of you watching the replay, sometimes we do have to mute the song. I do apologize about that, but it is what it is. Pretty familiar songs to begin with. Shouldn't be too hard to recognize what it is. But I'm spinning the wheel. I'm spinning the wheel. I'm spinning the wheel, y'all. Jason Jen, I tell me when to stop. Stop. It landed on Cuff It by Beyonce. One, 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 one. Still play it? You would still play it? Really? Andrew, would you play it? Morris is saying one. Jay Dowd is saying one. Everybody say one. Everybody says one. All right. Jen, I, would you still play this song? I played it twice last weekend and I have an edit that I play of that track. And I played it at once. I played it out of respect by Aretha Franklin, where Ooh. actually it was like, whatever. And then it was like, I think I'm falling in love, whatever. Right. Then uh -huh. the other time I played it and I was playing more like new disco style stuff. And I played it during an after party. And I felt like during the wedding, the track landed, but it in my opinion, the issue with that track's great, but you have to have the right crowd. And in most instances, like if it's not a super diverse crowd or it's not like a crowd that's dialed in, I feel like it falls flat because, you know, yeah. basically as soon as she started the chorus, I was out of the track. Same. Wedding for the, like the after party vibe that I was doing, which that crate is coming to create hackers this week. It, that was more like vibey. So it was pretty cool. Like all the... All little mommies, all little girls were like dancing, singing, top of their lungs. Like it was a good vibe. I want that crate. All right. Spin the wheel one more time. Tell me when to stop, my friend. And stop. It landed on How Deep Is Your Love by Calvin Harris. Give me a one. Give me a zero. Will you still like it? Still like it? Kevin says zero. Randy says one. Rocky says zero. Michael says zero. Eddie says one. It's split down the middle on the chat. Jay says zero. Uh, a lot of zeros. Okay. Calvin Harris, how deep is your love? Zero, zero, zero. Boy, all right. I love any classic Calvin Harris. Jason Janai, Seth I'm Starter. Like a point, I'm a point five on that one. I'm a point five on the track. I feel like it's got to be the right scenario to play that track. It's another one, right? Like to me, that's a track that I would bookend that track with something that I knew was gonna hurt. Maybe it was "Show Me Love" into "How Deep Is Your Love" into "Love Tonight," something like yeah. that. Yeah. And that's how I would. How Same. My, it's not a set starter. It's it's a vibe, but it's not a set starter. I don't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because right. I feel like it's the energy on the track on the beginning. Like to set to start a set, I feel like it's got to be welcoming enough and familiar enough to get people to groove a little bit, or to get to shake them up. Right. Like it's got to be something that's gonna to shift the energy. And I love that track as a track, but I feel like it doesn't have punch in the beginning and it yeah. takes a while to get to the part that everyone is going to go crazy to because it builds for a little bit and then it drops. Agreed. I'm digging the new Calvin Harris, by the way, really good stuff. Let's do one more round. Let's go into the, let's go into the, the crate hacker community side. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. good choice. Okay. Oh, so check out the right hand side over here and I'll spin the wheel. Just Tell more to stop and stop. Okay. So Darnell. True. Ooh, Darnell. Darnell said, talk, come and talk to me. You know what? I heard about Darnell and his events. I hear that they're making a lot of babies at his events. <laughs> uh, the population in, in Darnell's area continues to rise all the time. <laughs> Just a panty dropping soundtrack. We're getting a lot of zeros, some ones. Jay's giving it a one. I'm going to give it, damn, dude, that is, a, that is the jam. It, right place, right time. Late night R&B set. You're coming in after a couple of cognacs. I would play it. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. You, you know what? I'm, I'm going to say that I'm going to, that's going to be like a, a show ender, right? Like that's going to be like, I'm working at a, a, like an open format sports bar and there's 300 people climbing all over each other at the end yeah. and leave. But before I send them on their way, that's going down. So technically, I guess it could be a set starter, but it's really like a set ender for me. Yeah, I just could see myself going in so many different directions with that. Oh, Some yeah, Kevin Campbell, SWV. I, I, like right, do, I like it. Yeah, let's do one more uh, user suggestion. Tell me when to stop. And stop. Oh, Jade out, Bedrock, Young Money. One, zero, zeros, ones, ones, one, 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 one. Rocky, Ismail, zero, Michael, zero, Sam, zero. Really? 
This is another crate that everyone needs in their freaking on their Serato is like that mid 2000s, like throwback hip hop, ATL vibe, like the dream, young money. Yeah. I feel like there's so much in that. And that's, you know, there's what you know about that, right? All that that's connecting to like in the wedding space, right? Think about couples that are getting married today. Rewind time, 15 years. What were they doing? Okay. They were like in high school, they're in, in grammar school that like that was on the radio all the time. I'm with that song. I'll keep that one. In he that. said that really fast, but take note of what he just did there. Every time he goes and talks to a client, he in his mind, he's thinking back 15 years ago to a time when they thought that they were cool. That's well, what that's the key is. Elaborate. Like as someone that's working, if you're doing private events, that's really, if you're working in the bar scene too, you're going to look at people and try to get your sense on who they are, where they're from or how old they are. And as a private event DJ, like one of the most important things that you can ask someone is how old they are and how old their parents are and not to do anything other than to just put yourself in a space was with when music was the most influential because there's so many studies that clearly state when music touches the most, the core of most people. And that's between the ages of 14 and 20, essentially. And there's a sliding scale, right? It could be 15 to 22, but you put yourself in a space where you have, you start to narrow things down. And one thing about like bedrock specifically is look what was on the radio that period of time. And it was like a cluster of that. And for anyone that's paying attention, like music kind of changes all at once and it like changes again right like a lot of stuff and then there's always like an outlier that comes out and drops something that's like way off and then they're like a lone wolf on the road but like a lot of the pop stuff is going to be moving around in the same direction yeah like, for every britney spears like, and Sync, there's a machine gun kelly or or someone just off off kilter or billy eilish great example there's always that one oddball that's just doing their own path yeah wow so this good. is incredible. It's incredible to think about the psychology that goes into even just pushing play on a song. Like you give this more thought than most. I think you have to do it. Remember, like I am a lifelong DJ at this point. I've I'm I, I've not been in the game as long as Joe, wherever Joe is on here. Like I've been around for a minute and I've done a lot of different things, a lot of different places. And over the course of me playing, and I'm still actively playing every week, right? You learn by doing, right? And if yeah. you're someone that's coming up in this space, right? Like tools like Create Hackers didn't exist when I was coming up. So there was no like phone a friend, let me get a playlist, let me get some ideas or inspiration. I think that's like the benefit of what Create Hackers brings to the table for anyone and every, it doesn't matter if you're majesty in Japan, or if you're in someone in Alabama, or you're in Florida or you're, it doesn't matter. You can get stuff that's regional. You can get stuff that's genre or era specific. And it's a way for me, like you had to learn a lot of different stuff because if you didn't, you would look like a fool when you were playing. And I never <laughs> wanted to look like a fool. I worked really hard at not looking like a fool. So you put a lot into it. And now this platform, this tool is almost like a superhuman shortcut that a lot of people can take to stack crates and to do homework and to find music that works that just never really well, what you can do this for, right for me it's just the it's, it's, it's the assurance of knowing that i can look at someone like you who's probably have one of the largest multi-ops in america that i can look and lean and say i've got somebody who i can say maybe a pat on the back and say yeah that song is good to go we don't get that kind of confirmation or validation anymore until we push play and take our chance with that dance floor. They'll give us the feedback. We'll know if it works. But if we as DJs can report back to that other DJ and say, yo, that song smashed last week, get it in rotation. It, to me, I look up to people like you and Joe, and I want to bring Brian Bonacici on and get some thoughts from him next. But we look up to you all because it's confidence building for the rest of us to know I, I, that you played it. I look at the analytics from some of the crates that I've been able to share and that currently can be found by anyone on the Crate Hackers platform. And there's an opening DJ, an opening wedding set, like an opening open format wedding opener mix that I did. That was like, it was like a half hour, 35 minutes, whatever it is. And like that set is something that anyone could literally pull into their Serato and put into play if that's like the vibe or the lane that you're in. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's just, it's something that these tools are are just awesome. Yeah, man. They, it's fun to see 
I saw somebody on threads the other day, one of my old high school buddies said, there's something so deeply intimate about looking at somebody else's playlist. It's so damn true. I just, I, there's something about looking at another person's playlist that is just mysterious and vibey. It's like peering into your soul musically. I love and it. And we get to see that all the time. And it's an honor to have you share that with us. Can we get a one? Keep the ones flowing for Jason Janai. One, one, one. I well, one, one, that. one. One times a million one. Come on now. All right. I, I tell you what, the quest, the hunt for the songs, the hunt for the inspiration to me is that's like there's something in that. So like you might see a track and some of the crates that I have on the platform have the exact edits and all the different stuff. Others don't. And the reason for that is so that you can go through, search out and find edits to make it yours. Yep. So it's not like an exact replica, so to speak. Do it. The hunt for the music, the hunt for the crazy edit, the hunt for the thing that was different. That to me is what the magic is about what we do, right? So it's always gonna be fresh, always gonna be different. And I, yep. I love that. We're record shopping. We're record shopping every Tuesday okay. night here on Zoom. And of course the replay always to be found on on YouTube. Hey, Brian Bonus, soon to be joining us here. I'd like to bring him on and see these faces together. Is Joe Bunn kicking it with us? Is he still in the chat? He had to go to bed. Yeah, that's typical. Yeah. That's all right. To see you two on the same screen with me, thank you. For those that do not know, Janai Bonacisi, you have a little thing coming up in November. Lay it on me, B. What's happening? Yeah, man. I'm excited for it. We're uh, headed to ATL and putting on, I think this is number eight. So our eighth live experience where people like who are on this call just get together. It's finding the people who put these mixes together in a lot of cases there too. So like the scooters, the uh, fuses, you know, the DMS crew and some of these record pools that have provided these amazing edits up, but then also just people that you look up to that you've been wanting to see play and get inspired. Those folks are all there too. So it's a, it's not just music. It's obviously business too. It's inspiration. It's just so many things wrapped into three days that you just go, wow, this is, this is pretty incredible. You get tired just in <laughs> like being inspired, I guess that I do that myself. And I feel like I'm, I've seen a lot, but I still keep getting inspired by people who are there. So well, that's why I wanted to bring you on, not only to obviously promote the DJ collective coming to Atlanta, but also you are here throughout the duration of the hackathon. You're constantly learning anything you picked up or maybe advice you want to share about set starters today. I, you know, what J Jan and I said in the very beginning is this is a hard one because lately uh, it's slow wedding season. My wedding season has picked up. So like in the last four weeks, I've done the, like the family circuit. So I did like a family reunion, which I've never done ever in my life. Like a family reunion. I think it's harder than a wedding, to be quite honest with you, because yeah. you are so many kids and they're asking for certain things. And it's just like, where do you even go? And then you got 90 year old grandma and her sister, three sisters that are all that same age. And you're <laughs> trying to navigate that. So I did that. I did a 50th wedding anniversary. They had never had a wedding before. 50th wedding anniversary. And Whoa. so all of their family and friends were there. It was only 30 people. So that set is like so different than like your typical wedding because, but yet there's still elements of a wedding there. And then the last one I just did was this 40th 0040 bond 40th birthday themed party where you're going from like this bond style music and then they want you to flip it on a dime and let's go. And so like those start starters are totally different. I would never play like what I would do. And then I did a pool event too recently where like, that's different too. Yeah. And it's just, you wouldn't want to go right in some pool parties or even within a pool party, there's seven different types that could be out there where you've got the Vegas. Most people think of that, but then Jen and I did one together where they weren't all there yet. And you can't like just rage them right from you there. Kind of it's got to be more vibey. Yeah. So like, this is a cool crate because you, what you might see in there, you might go, I would never use that for a set starter, but in the right context, this could save you. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah, he's always well, learning. We're always picking up bits and pieces from some of the greatest out there. And I just want to shamelessly promote the uh, Travel DJ Blend with Brian B. He serves up a podcast as often. How often are you doing this now? Weekly? Every week. Every Damn, week. Dude. Sometimes twice a week. I just put out the latest one. It actually is a music episode. So I try to like, I scour these pools and all the different things to try to find stuff. And I try to give back because I wish I would have had somebody helping me along the way too. And man, it's all about just sharing love and helping in the next 
next person up because who knows when I might need it still too. I'm still learning. <laughs> I literally hit Jen. I all the time. I'm like, dude, what would you do here? What would you do in this situation? And and he's graciously like given to this whole community. So I'm a big yeah. fan of people who like that. And well, vice versa. Those- I mean, like Brian sometimes will be like, like for any DJ is not following his podcast, like you got, you should really jump on it because he talks about a lot of different things, but like every month he'll drop an episode where he talks about music and like, he shared stuff with me where we've played events like in other countries. And he's, Hey, have you heard this? And I'm like, Oh no, I haven't heard this. Like, where'd you <laughs> to, like share it? And I'm like, shit, like I missed that one. You know what I mean? But he he's really on it. And it's always something a little bit different. And like Brian and my our styles are a little bit they're they're aligned, totally. but it's a little bit different. So like his stuff that he gets into is like a little bit different than mine. So sometimes like he'll put me on edits and I'm like, oh shit, that's really cool. And I try to do the same back to him. I'm like, I use this and this killed and whatever. And just having him involved with all this now is just- Yeah, you see what's going on between this little collaboration? These two go back and forth and they try and find what gets that dance floor moving. And that's the motivation is getting that dance floor going. But you're seeing this happen right now with a hundred people in the chat. Like we, we all want to know what to play. And we didn't have that before until you all came along and inspired us to do this. So thank you. Collaboration is what makes this community huge. So thank you. for And we'll be talking about a lot of stuff with the DJC in the next couple of, uh, of weeks ahead, because there's a lot coming out. But if anyone is really looking to be inspired in different ways, business, performance, music, like access, building relationships with other people from all over the country that are like-minded and looking to push the bar. And whether you're new to the business or you own a business with a hundred people working for you, there's something for everyone at this. And in the past, we brought people like Scratch Bastard, DJ Precise, Eric Rhodes, Binks, uh, Jazzy Jeff, Capers. Uh, so like we've, oh, Angelo UK, we've brought in some really big names, Scooter, Digital Dave, like we've brought in big people to help inspire everyone that's there so it's not like something you're gonna get sometimes people are like oh it's it's another dj conference it's not a conference this is not a it's more of an experience based learning event uh, essentially but people would say oh it's a conference but we don't have a trade show floor we don't have people push you to sign up or to buy stuff it's not that way it's more about being able to sit in a room and just kick it with other people that are looking to grow as well and there's a magic that comes out of synergy. Just look at what happens at Crate Hackers, right? And that happens, Crate DJC happens in person. Crate Hackers is, this is like a daily thing. Crate Hackers. That's it. Program That's the key I wanted day. to bring up is that this is the first time that all of the Crate Hackers will yeah. be in person together. We're doing this virtually all the time. DJC is the first time we're going to have every single member arriving on scene. So if y'all want to be there and you really want to do some serious hacking, this is the time. DJC, we'll talk about that in the weeks ahead. Jason, Jenna, I know your time is valuable. We got about five minutes left, but I see some people in the chat as well. Uh, Man, you know what? I miss radio. Radio had to back out today. I think we need to get on a, I think we need to get on a show somewhere. Me and you, we got to set something up and stir it up. I'm, I'm missing it right now too. What are you thinking? What do you want to do together? I don't know. I don't know. I think there's a lot going on. I think we've got a lot of stuff to give. Uh, let's go, kid. <laughs> Another project, right? I would love to just, yeah, I got big dreams with you, kid. Let's get, but I want everyone else to raise their hand with any questions they may have, because I feel like I've taken a lot of your time, but let's give any hacker the opportunity to ask any question you would like. We're going to keep the rules simple. One question. I'm going to mute you so we can finish up. We're going to keep it light and bright so I can get as many people up on stage with Jan and I. So quick in, quick out. Get that question in your mind. I'm going to unmute you, starting with DJ Axel Joe. DJ Axel Axel Joe. Let me unmute you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. I I don't really have a... Hold on. Let me turn turn off my phone because I'm on my phone trying to be getting my food around. I wanted to say a sincere thank you to you, Aaron Trailer, personally. And I've been meaning to catch up with you about it. Hmm. And hold on, I'll fix my volume so I can hear you guys. You sound and good. There we go. I like and where you're going with this, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Say it again. I said, I like where you're going with this. Continue. <laughs> I wanted to reach out to you. You haven't been around and been very busy. And I understand and I respect that highly. But I wanted to to give you personally a sincere thank you. 
because although I haven't been doing much for gigs, my wife is very sick and I've been taking care of her, but that's besides the point. Well, the point is, is that you spoke about the purge. I was doing that and I've been doing that all year. And also you spoke about metadata and how ultra mega important that is to add into your files. And no joke, I have made the biggest change with the music that I have already fixed by renaming and made it even better than I ever had. And now because I'm extremely particular about if it doesn't have it, I got to go find it straight up all the way. Thank you. Sweet changes, man. Thank I you. Say, I, I I don't know. Thank you just doesn't seem to be the fitting word. I'm feeling it. I, I feel like sometimes words with emotion really get yeah. the point across. And I want to say thank you, Axel. He's a, a ride or die with us. But can we lift up Axel's wife in the chat? Can we just put a little something in the chat? Little words of encouragement because we're here more than just the music, right? We've all kind of been through our ups and downs. And y'all have helped lift me up in many ways. So let's help Axel, can we? Thank you. I did not learn about this metadata just by off chance. I learned from the greats. And there is a video that I'm going to pin. Jason Janai spoke about. Janai, you did a video a while back talking about the importance of metadata and how easy it is to take your music from one laptop to another just by storing metadata. Can you maybe elaborate while I pull up that video? Yeah. So I, I think this part of the process, just getting your music library in order is, is super important. And like having an accurate backup allows you to be able to go into a situation and to be able to search tracks or music or edits that you are familiar with mm -hmm. in the event that like you have to maybe put a hard drive on a new computer or you, you're not able to, to properly load every one of your smart crates or something like that. If you have your data in line and you have a tagging system that you're familiar with, it will allow you to be a better DJ in a lot of different ways. So I'm always looking to like re-engineer and almost continue to optimize the efficient way of categorizing stuff, grouping stuff, tagging stuff, putting an easy to locate file like process in play when I'm, whenever I'm working in my music library and I'm about ready to do my third, what is this? My second quarter per, or is it no? it'll be my third quarter purge at the end of, I do it at the end of August. The end of the first month of the quarter is when I go through like a purge of what I have. And man, I tell you what, like the meta data allows me to make sure I don't erase the wrong edits. It makes me, it just makes keeps me on point. Yeah, yeah. Boy, I'm going through, I'm sorry. I, I love that you're killing time for me because I'm really trying to find everything to share here. But let's just take you straight to the source here. Jason Janai serves up an incredible video channel, crushing it, I think, at least three times a week. He's putting up something new. I will dig up that video. It's somewhere buried under these hundreds that he's created. But there is just a video that explains step by step the importance of having your music tagged properly because it helps you, boy, Jenna, you've been busy. Look at all these freaking videos. I'm on deck. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good God, dude. It's you know, stop. Playlist for music management. It's probably in there. I'll get to it later, but just check it. I'll put the link in the it's in there somewhere. But nonetheless, he's just been nonstop busy, and I'm proud to have him on. Let's learn more from him by getting our next question from Kerson. Karim, unmute yourself here, buddy. And if you want to turn your camera on, I'd really appreciate it. Go hey, ahead. What's up, everyone? It is this is the, the list right here, Aaron. Aaron Cha. Thank you. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. Kareem, go ahead. Or Kareem? Yes, yeah, Kareem. Kareem, thank you. Yo, what's hey, up? Hey, thank you, gentlemen, for inviting me tonight, man. I, I don't often get a chance to come to the hackathons because of my work, but I recently resigned to become a full-time single out DJ. And I'm all in on this. I like I watch all you guys' videos as much as I can. I spend most of my days learning from y'all and putting things in place in an effort to become the best DJ I can be, because I hadn't DJed since the 80s. Okay, and welcome back. So, I'm, thank you. And so I have a question that I'll be, I'm glad you guys are here tonight, because I want to ask not just you, but the, the, the whole forum. And it's real simple. Do you guys suggest or recommend that I have my music on my internal, external, or both? Both, but internal is what you should be working off of. You should have your backup on an external. 
If you have so should, should my external be plugged into the laptop while I'm at while I'm performing, or just in case something goes on and I need to plug it in to access my tracks? Honestly, you should probably you should have a library that should be able to fit and that would work the most optimally by being on your hard drive and, and losing the external. I feel like years ago I always rocked an external always, but now you can get this. My my computer I have right here is eight terabytes, right? And like you, music memory is super accessible now, but also like the tools that Create Hackers brings to the table, like the folder flatteners and all that stuff, getting rid of the duplicates that Glenn came up with as a wizard. I, I feel take your whole music library, put it on external, right? Do that. Then take that music library on the external, use the, the folder flattener tool, put that onto your actual internal on your laptop and that should be what you play out of right and then like okay. you should have a one folder structure and that actually i would say and i don't want to ruffle anyone up here but i would say a two folder structure is what i would do i would do a one folder for all of your content that you're going to use and then i would have a second folder for all of your new ad content that you're going to be building Ooh, i like that yes that's what i found to be the most beneficial i have a whole playlist of how i went through the misery of Right when Joe was doing his ball one year anniversary party that day, my computer processor crashed and I had no, I was in the middle of a whole reboot of my whole computer. I didn't, I was in the process of, of doing things the old way, the non Glenn, non create hackers way of deleting duplicates. And I spent three months through COVID every day, hours and hours every day doing this manually. And then I, my computer processor died and I lost what was on my hard drive. I lost I didn't have a time machine backup of what was going on. So I had to restart the process with my full music collection once again. And I have a whole playlist on YouTube that could probably help you through some of the steps, but yeah, you get it on a single internal, single folder, internal drive. That's the one. Yeah, it really is. I think you, you just brought up a great point and we'll wrap with that question, but space and storage is just getting cheaper and more internal that I think we can start to ditch the external. I think now no, we can safely do it. Aaron, real quick, it's real cleaner. quick. Aaron, yes, I sir. just want, I wanted to say, because I know what Jace, Jason just said about how all these new computers got all this space, but as a new cat coming back on the scene, I, I went out and splurged, splurged on a MacBook M1. Okay. So I can't afford to go out and get another MacBook that's going to give me more space. And well, I mean, that should be just fine, knows. though. If you've got that new MacBook, you should be more than... How much do you think about bringing with you, man? How much music do you intend to bring? Because I think... If you have a 250 gig or a 500 gig, that should suffice if you're performing a, a lot of open format, don't you think? I'm, I don't know. I'm just, I'm learning as I go, man. I'm, I'm flying a plane, building the plane. <laughs> you got the tools, it sounds like. I think you, if you have an M1, yeah. you're, you're good. You're good. Stay there. If you start to max out any more of that space, then come back to me. We'll do a little weight loss program with your hard drive. <laughs> That's what I need to do right now. Okay. Right now. Start right now. Right I'm now. I'm going to do the flattening tonight. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. Hey, by the way, thank you so much by the way, for joining us. There is the folder flattener that can get you started and make a great backup. And there's a lot of questions about the folder flattener. I see it in the comments. I see it on in, in our private group. I made a very deep dive video. Gosh, we don't, we, you inspired me, Jason Jan. I'm trying to get my YouTube game. Like efficient. you're killing it too. I every time I go on, there's a new video. Now we gotta we just start building it all together. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, I got I learned from the great. That's why that's why I keep bringing you back. One more question, and we'll send you off. DJ Bose, welcome. Hello. Hey, can you guys hear me? We sure can. Hello, welcome. Hi. So I guess just a bit of context in case it was a silly question, but I started DJing this summer. So obviously, thanks a lot to you, Jason Jenna, for even though I haven't even got to those events, like I really got to start thinking as I'm getting into more of these events. So I think my question was tailored specifically towards the comment where you made that you put in, let's say, 100 songs in your crate starter crate. So my question is, do you sometimes when I have a lot of like 100 songs, it's if I'm looking for specific genres, it's hard to find them. So do you use the genre? filter on Serato or do you separate that hundred crate thing into like sub genres or what do you or you just dump the whole thing or how do you find the next song which is similar to the current ones mm. because there could well, be a lot of songs in between that's a good question so the start the set starter 
create is really meant to spawn ideas, right? So, okay, so let's just say I'm playing a wedding and I've just been playing dance music and disco and whatever. And I'm like, I haven't played hip hop. And I go into my set starter. And I'm like, I'm going to do throwback R&B. Where to party at? I'm looking at all the people. They, they, they look like they're 35 years old. And I'm like, let me throw it back and see if I can get them to vibe into this. So I maybe I start that. As soon as I start that song, I'm moving out of that folder and I'm going into my music library and I'm going to search R&B or throwback hip hop because I have that all tagged. That's the proper, I think as you continue to evolve as a DJ, you're going to figure out like the way you, your the way my mind works might be a little bit different than the way your mind works in terms of what you think of when you're playing. And that's like why Create Hackers is special because it helps you think different ways and so to speak based on who's curating that crate so for me i'm not ever guided specifically by genre or by era or by anything unless i need to stay in that lane i think the magic of being like a really impactful dj is like being on the highway and staying in your lane but also being able to, to jump into the next lane for a track or two because you're looking at Uncle Steve on the dance floor and you're like, yeah, that dude's a little bit older. Let me play something for him real quick and get him to go crazy. And then you dip right back and all the 26 year olds are still like in the lane. You know what I mean? I, I feel the set starter crate is a great place to start the thought idea. It's to help you sometimes think through a roadblock or maybe the sidestep yeah. roadblock that could be potentially in front of you. Like, what did I play? What didn't I play? And I don't even look at genre in that crate. I look at more like beats per minute than anything. That's like a lot of how I think and how I, my, my music library is track number plays. No. Yes. Yeah, track number plays beats per minute song title artist key. That's how my mind works. Now, some people might look at that and be like, Dude, why would you do that? I look at song title and key and this, like all, everyone is different. So that's how my mind works. And that's how I set my, my, my stuff up. When I go from one, then I just go to my master and I say, okay, I'm eight beats per minute. I know I'm not going to be too far off from that. So let me skip down to not a hundred and see what I can tap into. That would make sense for this room. It's a beautiful mind. Listen to that guy awesome. talk. I love it. Nuggets. Yeah. Nonstop nuggets. Hey, before we wrap it up, uh, one quick check in. I believe I'm going to assume overseas DJ. Uh, no, just we, yeah. Give us some words of inspiration. You said you needed five seconds with the hackers before we sign off. Go yeah, ahead. Can you, we can hear you. Yep. All right. Tight. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, if you know me, all about positivity. For all you guys who have thousands of questions, right? There are crate hacker help files, right? There's, if you go to the site, it's on there. You can find all the videos, all these questions that you're asking. But anything that you can't find for the next week, I am free. I am not working and I am only focusing on DJ things. So I'm telling you, hit me up on Instagram, find my email, whatever. If you have questions, I am here to help you. If I what? then I will do whatever I can, exhaust everything that I possibly can. Kareem, hey man, hey, good jumping back in the game. If you got questions about beat source or or your storage solutions, things like that, hey, hit me up for DJ Bose. Hey, hit me up. I got a couple ideas about how you might be able to build your playlist so that things are a little bit more in a flow and how, how things can help oh you out. Oh my gosh. You got to watch and this guy tear it up too on Twitch. It's, yes. it's a community, man. It is a community. We are here to help one another. Someone right. who doesn't have an answer, someone has an answer. You just got to reach out and, and reach one and teach one. All right. That's all I got. Have a good one. On that note, we want to send love to our soldiers across the world, including DJ Majesty. Uh, thank you so much for, for for giving us the freedom to talk about music on a Tuesday night. You give us that. <laughs> you give us that. You you and your, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hey, am, am I that. hearing Dominic? Is Dominic with us? Do I hear Dominic Roland? I didn't see him. I, I could have sworn I saw him earlier, but nonetheless, I want a quick big shout out to Dominic for helping us. There we go. I'm back. With that, I'm gonna wrap it up. Thank you all so much for joining us next week. Even more hacks next week, even more crates. This crate will be available shortly. Won't take too long to put it together, but if you want to get started with it right now, go to crateoftheweek.com, crateoftheweek.com. You can follow Jason Janai and DJ Majesty on their respective social channels. And you can find me in the Crate Hackers private group as well as on Crate Hackers YouTube. For the entire Crate Hackers community from all across the globe and right here in Nashville, Tennessee, one, 
one, one, one in the chat. Come on, light it up, hackers. Happy yeah. hacking. Okay. Happy hacking.